guys, welcome back to the channel where I cover missing persons, unsolved cases, crime news, and more. The autopsy report has been released for Alexi Trevisio's baby. And uh, they were speaking about it the other night on Vinny's show on Court TV. So I'm going to play that. I'm Vinny Politan. This is Closing Arguments. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. And we've been covering a story out of New Mexico involving a 19-year-old young woman who is at the hospital. She's at the hospital, goes into labor, but runs into the bathroom, delivers the child by herself in the bathroom in a hospital, and then puts the child in plastic and in the trash and then goes back to the hospital room. Unreal story. Well, tonight we've got the autopsy results. And we're going to have them for you in just a moment. But for those of you not familiar with this story, take a look. She put the baby in the trash can, and then she put another clean liner over the top of it. Okay. So they looked, when they looked in there, it looked, there was no trash in there, but it was underneath the clean bag. The okay. baby's dead, okay? We have him in trauma too, but she killed the kid. Yeah, how old, was the, how old was the baby? I don't know, it's full term. We discovered a dead baby in the bathroom. Oh my gosh. That's very crazy. It came out the baby and I didn't know. Lexi, I told you about this. But it's Lexi, I told you, baby, to tell me the truth. What did you do to it? Okay, stop right here. Stop, stop. Number one priority, guys. Number one priority. If she just had a baby, I don't know if she's delivered the placenta. She's bleeding significantly. Yeah. I've spoken to the obstetrician at Loveless. They want her up there as soon as possible. Okay. I need, I need your, I just need your permission to transfer her for medical. To me. She needs to be on the Oh, you're right. You, but she, she is a student, too. She's still no, 19. You're, you're right. You're right. She needs to. I'm sorry, I forgot. She's 19. But you need to, for, to make sure that you're safe. I need to send you to Left Loveless to labor delivery. Will you please agree to that? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Okay. I'm going to work on that. Um, in terms, I'm sorry about this, but in terms of delivering um, a baby and it looked like you tried to hide it, you do have to have the police involved. And that thing was crying. It came out with that I know, I know. But the, the baby's going to have to be taken for autopsy and you know, be an investigator and everything. How big is the baby? It's full term. What? Nine months? Somebody was crying. Let's see. Have you watched the news of the, the girls that what they do to their babies and what they go to jail? That was crying. So that. So you notice the beginning of that clip that they're getting everybody caught up. You see her running, well, fast walking to the bathroom, holding her butt. And then sadly, you see the nurses taking the trash can across the way to one of the trauma rooms to try to revive the baby. Uh, it, still, it still astonishes me how not only Alexi handles the situation, but but her mom, it, it, it totally astonishes me. It's as if these people act as if they had no idea she was pregnant. And I'll actually be going over that because a lot of her fellow cheerleaders and students at her school, they knew she was pregnant. But let's get back into this uh, update about the autopsy. Okay, they talk a lot about the autopsy. Autopsy is out, so to help us Work through all this tonight. Joining us from Columbia, South Carolina, retired medical examiner, retired forensic pathologist, Dr. Michelle Dupree. Uh, Dr. Dupree, great to see you tonight. Thank you so much. Uh, let's start first with cause and manner of death here because this is causing a lot of confusion for a lot of folks. Cause of death, entrapment. I've never seen that before. Been doing this for many years. But I've never seen that before. Manner of death, homicide. Um, what do those words mean to you, Dr. Dupree? Well, the entrapment is, as you would expect, it means that the, the baby was in a position that they were trapped and couldn't get out. So in the trash can, 
um, and most likely suffocated um, because they were entrapped. And of course, um, the baby didn't get in there by themselves, so that would be a homicide. That is horrific. I had never seen entrapment either, so I'm I'm really glad that he has this expert on because I, you know, she the baby obviously suffocated, but entrapment was definitely a new term for me. But it makes sense. It it does. Now, let's take a look at some more uh, findings from this autopsy, which will be very, very significant. Um, live born male newborn, aerated lungs, air in stomach, no decomposition. Um, tell us a little bit about that, what that means, because I think part of the defense here will be that this child was not born alive, that this was a stillbir stillbirth or perhaps died very quickly after taking one or two breaths. Right. The most important thing for us to determine in cases like this is whether or not the child was born alive or not. And one of the ways that we test that is to determine if there was air in the lungs. And we can do that in a couple of different ways. We can do it microscopically by identifying that the alveoli in the lungs had expanded and were air filled. We can also do that by floating the lungs in water. Um, the lack of maceration tells us that the baby was not dead in utero. Um, so we really have all indications here that it was a live birth. Okay, now. That is just, we all knew that was, that that was probably what was going on. But it, it's just so horrific to me and I still can't comprehend why she didn't call for help. Why didn't she hit the hit the, the 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 panic button in the room? There's a string or a button in every hospital bathroom. Uh, she could have yelled at the door, knocked at the door, uh, multiple multiple ways to alert the you know the staff and the nurses were were checking on her. So it, to me, there's just no excuse for not asking for help. And then she goes in and and you know covers it up puts it in a plastic trash bag and puts it at the bottom of the trash and basically hides it on top of you know underneath other trash it's just it's, it's disgusting and it's just horrific now another thing because i spoke with her attorney at length he joined us on the show one of the things he said is that that hospital had administered some drugs before the test results were back that she was pregnant could those drugs have played any sort of a role, whether it's morphine or something for her pain? She was in there for back pain. I know we don't have the toxicology results for you, doctor, uh, but what would you be looking for? And could that play a role in all of this? Well, it could, but obviously it depends on exactly what those drugs were and what their purpose was. If there, if it was some kind of narcotic or was it um, a painkiller that was not a narcotic, you know, exactly what were they? But drugs can have an effect on pregnancy. They can cause the pregnancy to come early. Um, and then they can also do some damage to the fetus itself. It just depends on what they were. And unfortunately, we don't know at this point in time. Will the toxicology be able to render those results? Yes, it definitely should be able to. So now I'm gonna ask you another question because I've covered so many trials through the years. There are experts like you who testify, but then there's always, not always, but most of the time there's an expert on the other side. When it comes to whether or not this was a stillbirth, could you see any scenario where a forensic expert would come in and have a differing opinion than the doctor who performed the autopsy if you're talking about air in the stomach, aerated lungs. Is that something that could be in the gray area or is that something that's pretty crystal clear and you would expect doctors to agree on? That is pretty crystal clear. I would expect doctors to agree on that. If the baby took a breath or, or breaths, there should be air in the lungs and there was. So looking at where this battle may be, I have a feeling it may be related to that toxicology that we don't have yet. Do you see a scenario there where doctors could have different opinions about the effects and impacts that the drugs had on this child? 
Yes, absolutely. And again, it depends on what those drugs were um, and, and at what point they were administered. If it was something that could affect the fetus, that could affect the um, the pregnancy, whether it enhanced it or whether it retarded it in some way, it absolutely could play a role. All right, doctor, I want to play one more thing for you here. This was the charge nurse during a police interview. Here's what he said about his observations. And then I'd like you to tell us if you see or hear any significance in what. Yeah, that toxicology, I guess they could try to argue that. And we got to hear her her attorney which gosh he was like a ghost and i saw him on another interview and gotta say i don't not like their her her attorney and mom's attorney because you know how moms are all up in all this uh as far as i'm concerned zero excuse and there's just no excuse and i don't care they give morphine they give certain drugs to mothers in the hospital so yeah there's just you know, no excuse. And it is it is good to hear her say that the actual autopsy report, pretty much they're not going to be able to argue that one. But toxicology, well, that one I suppose could be could be some contention for some arguments. What he's saying. Let's let's watch. He was blue, he was tucked in there, she had him wrapped in one um, and twisted and then folded under him. And two more on top of him, and then another trash can, a clean one in the trash line. So when I broke it open, he was tucked, and he was there was nothing. Sorry, you had to go through that. I'm serious. Yeah, it's well, everybody, it's just, it's it's just crazy. Yeah, I know. Um, in no sense, the placenta had no. Okay. Um, that's why she shipped her. Yeah, that's okay. where she. Well, she went to Loveless. Oh, Loveless in Roswell. 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 Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. I heard. I miss her blood, I'm sorry. Yeah, she's still the Doctor, anything there significant? Absolutely. What he describes is intentional. Um, the baby was wrapped up and tucked in um, into this plastic bag um, and around this plastic bag. And that was intentional. There was no way that this baby would survive that. And the umbilical cord. A lot of people are wondering. Like, how does someone by themselves in a, in a bathroom um, take care of that part of the delivery? What scenario do you see there potentially for um, cutting the umbilical cord? Well, the umbilical cord is typically not that thick anyway. It can actually be torn. Um, if there's no sharp instruments to make a cut, it can be torn um, and severed that way. And would the status of that cord have any impact on the health of the child in terms of figuring out what happened here? Not maybe so much in figuring out what happened, but we always examine the umbilical cord um, when we have newborns. We uh, examine that and the placenta, and, but it's for cases of infection or for cases of things like um, blood clots that would prevent the baby from getting the proper oxygenation. And that doesn't appear to be what happened in this case. Dr. Michelle Dupree, thank you. Yeah, I, I wondered, because she didn't have anything sharp in there, so did she... Did she cut the umbilical cord with her teeth? I mean, it's, like I said, this whole, oh, this whole thing is just, it's awful. This poor baby did not stand a chance with, with its mother, for sure. Um, yeah, it was, I really, um, I don't know. It just, it, it, it makes me so frustrated that, like I, I've said previously, that you've got, women out there who cannot have a child and would do anything to have a baby and then you have alexi 19 years old and decides to go to the hospital over quote unquote back pain and then run to the bathroom and deliver her baby and hide it from everyone yeah so the daily mail got some real interesting information. They have an exclusive. They spoke with some of her fellow students or classmates at the school. 
uh, basically, um, classmates, they all wanted to remain anonymous, which I totally understand. Uh, it says, high school classmates who spoke to Daily Mail on the condition of anonymity say Alexi Trevisio knew she was pregnant and hid it from almost everyone. She named the baby boy, uh, the one she was accused of killing, Alex. Yeah, we've seen that as well. And one school friend who said she was, she the teenager deserves some serious prison, uh, prison time. So at least one, and I'm assuming probably many others, that, you know, high school friends, people she go, went to school with, believe that she deserves to go to jail for this. Uh, another student said that when a cheerleading coach asked her if she was expecting, uh, she blamed her weight gain on taking birth control pills. Yeah. So it's it's ridiculous. It, it, it's completely because she totally she's trying to fool people, and she just it just wasn't happening. Uh, again, there's a there's a photo of her right here. There is Alexi before being pregnant, and then there's her on the right after she was pregnant. There's just no way that she and her her mom had. I had no idea. I just, to me, it's denial it can only go so far, you know, and mom, of course, she plays the part of the shocked mama like really well, but her attitude toward the hospital staff and especially toward, you know, toward law enforcement really, really ticks me off. You know, she's, she goes after them saying, well, you know, they come over to arrest her. Well, you can't, you know, you can't, you know, you have to tell me, you know, you can't tell her. Guess what? She's not a child anymore. She's 19. And again, you know, they have to keep telling her that. Uh, you know, she's lucky that she's uh, not facing any charges herself. Uh, classmates uh, apparently also stated that Alexi was a master manipulator to everyone. She had several friends, but very few close friends. Uh, one minute she could be friendly with you if she wanted something and then pretend you don't exist the next. The friends asked not to be identified because in Artesia, with its population of just 12,000, everyone knows everyone. So it's a small town, so nobody really wants to talk about it. Uh, they go on to say she had the attitude about her as if she was better than anyone else. It was almost as if she looked down on you. She thought that she was the best cheerleader at the school because she was friendlier with the cheer coaches than most of the other girls. Yeah, sounds like she's got some attitude, that's for sure. Uh, she spent most of her time with uh, Devin Fierro, her boyfriend of three years, who was also a senior at Artesia High School, which we saw in the body cam video in the waiting room at the hospital uh friends the say talk the friends say talk about her pregnancy started swirling in november last year when she would have been around seven months pregnant so people in the school started you know started some you know i think she's i think she's pregnant you know uh but she continued to deny it to anyone who would ask uh and a cheerleading coach again asked her if she was expecting and she, again, blamed her weight gain on taking birth control pills. Yeah, you don't gain weight like that from taking birth control pills. Uh, friends uh, told Daily Mail that uh, she never confirmed to them that she was pregnant, even though the rumors were rampant around the school. Uh, so, again, they said that, you know, they all believed that she was pregnant, and obviously they believed that it was, she was pregnant with his child. So, it, it's it's total denial, and I don't know what, what she was expecting, to be honest with you. And this is a picture of uh, the two of them at prom. Months, months after giving birth and dumping their child in the trash. So, check out the difference. Look at that. She's a small, thin girl, and there's no way anybody would have thought that she wasn't pregnant. And they have police evidence here that listed the baby's uh, descendant, which of course, sadly, is I guess that's how they refer to the baby as Alex. Seems a little odd to me, considering uh, Alexi's the mom. 
kind of seems seems like it stems from mom's name. Uh, and it stated uh, that I guess the, the fellow students were stating that she wore baggy clothes a lot. And the weight gain became mostly noticeable in mid December. Um, and they and she was telling uh, friends that she she gained weight and she needed to go on a diet. Okay. And like we just heard in the uh, court TV report, the newborn baby later died from entrapment when an individual is in an airtight container or relatively airtight container, in this case a tied plastic bag, consumes all the available oxygen until there's no longer enough oxygen to sustain life. Yeah, and again they did run a lab test at the hospital and she did come back positive for pregnancy. So, it's just, it's, it's horrible. It, 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 it really is. And obviously that baby was alive and well. And, uh, they could have at least, if not, they couldn't have saved it, they could have made an attempt to save it. And there is a pregnant cheerleader in denial right there. And here's a video that someone has of her cheerleading. See her here in the in the uh, circle to your left during it looks like a basketball game, and there's some more shots from the video, and then of course they sh a still of her running to the bathroom at the hospital holding her butt, probably because she was about to give birth at any moment. So this is a you know the school like it seems like everybody in school they knew she was pregnant whether whether or not whether or not she wasn't she wasn't going to indicate it they knew she was pregnant see there you go yeah that's a pregnant that's not fat honey that is pregnancy and there's her arrest warrant that was issued for her. It went through the entire stages here uh, from the hospital visit on January 27th. And if you want to read that, I will uh, post a, obviously post a, uh, the link to the Daily Mail article. They actually did a very thorough job going through a, a majority of this information. And again, she's she's still out on bond. Uh, they her family paid a one hundred thousand dollar unsecured bond. Uh, she does have conditions. She's on a curfew. Looks like a seven p.m. to seven a.m. curfew. She can't do drugs, no alcohol, or possession of firearms. Well, considering that she's nineteen, she shouldn't be doing any alcohol. But yeah, apparently her baby was cremated in February. Looks like the family has the remains of little Alex. And her next court date looks like is September 11th. But I, 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 I don't see her doing the one thing that she really should do, which is, is, is hopefully take a plea, uh, hope for a plea plea deal and uh you know and then do some you know some jail time probation whatever she needs to do to make this right but it doesn't seem like from the way mom acts and the way this attorney that mom and dad or at least mom has uh hired on he doesn't seem to think that she did anything wrong I beg to differ. Mom, again, mom seems to be uh, an enabler for sure. I think she gets a lot of her, a lot of that from her mom. And mom, you know, had to even give her her, tell her her social security number. And it seemed like her mom had her license and everything in the hospital. So she may be 19, but she's got a lot of growing up to do. Daily Mail also um, has an exclusive with the housekeeper 
who had to discover this horrific situation in the bathroom. Uh, she found bloody footprints outside the bathroom, apparently leading up to the water fountain outside. Uh, she said the bathroom looked like a war zone. Blood was everywhere. And she had to clean the bathroom twice. And then that's when, and then she found the baby in the trash, lifeless, face down in a trash bag. I can't imagine what this housekeeper has been going through dealing with this. So, can you tell me everything that happened on January 27th? Okay. Like, your involvement from... The, the time I was called? Yeah, to the end. Okay, I was called and um, to go clean the patient's bathroom in ER around, I can't, maybe 2 o'clock or so, I think it was the time, mm -hmm. I'm not too sure. So when I went in there, it was a glory, bloody massacre mess. Okay. Could you describe it, if possible? Uh, yeah, there was blood everywhere. Uh, there was blood on the floor, on the wall. Do you remember which wall? Um, the one behind the toilet, and then the one on the side, right here. You know, there's the one on, where the toilet sits, back of that. Yeah. And then on the side. Uh, where the call button is? Yeah. Okay. And uh, on the floor, everywhere. I mean, it was, was, it, was it like a like this is like this is the bathroom? Here's the toilet and the sink. And then here's the door. So is it was it just like like this or? Actually, it was all over the place, all over the floor. Because even when I was uh, going into the bathroom, there was blood on the um, coming out of the bathroom on the floor. Okay. So it was everywhere. Okay. So there's blood coming out of the bathroom. Do you yeah, know how far steps. it went? Okay. I think there were the person's uh, the person that was in there. Her footsteps, and she was coming out. So I was like, "Oh my gosh!" You know, I mean, it's even out here. How far out did you have to clean to get it? Uh, from the outside. Yes. Uh, right by, like around the water fountain. Where's the water fountain at? Right there. Oh, right next to the restroom. That, yeah. Okay. Well, if it's, it's on the left. Yeah. yeah. So you it went out to the water fountain. Did you have to clean like the hall or anything at all? I mopped up that the area right there. Quickly. Okay. And was it footprints? Yeah, I was. Was yeah. it footprints in the hall? Yeah. When you know, I guess she stepped on it, you know, mm -hmm. and then walked out with it, and then their uh, socks were wet. Okay. But it wasn't all the way to all the way to her room or nothing like that. It was just right by the water fountain. So just footprints in the hall to water fountain. Yeah. Okay. And what else happened? Okay, then I went in there and then um, I started cleaning. I started, uh, for first thing I did was I started mopping because we can't be walking around on that blood. Okay. So I started mopping and then I started, uh, after that I started wiping everything down. That I went to the toilet, you know, and I cleaned the toilet and then I got everything. I had to do everything like twice because it was, you know, bad. I wiped down the walls. And everything, and after I did all that, I usually throw my trash first, but for some reason that night I had to clean the floor up and everything else. And uh, when I went to go through the trash, I felt that when I picked up the trash and I looked in it, there was a, you know, there was trash in it, but I knew that it was, it didn't feel like when I picked it up, it was some weight. So I thought it was the, the trash bags, because we put the trash bags on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And so I started getting the trash out, and then when I did that, I seen that there was a baby in there. And that's when I um, I freaked out and I called uh, uh, Lori and HT or the nurses up front, and because uh, there was a baby in the trash, and the baby when I looked at it, I, the baby was wrapped up like in a, you know, like at the bottom of the trash can and mm -hmm. with trash on top of in a trash bag. And so, how did you did you see it like as soon as you picked it up? Uh, no, after I picked up the, the trash bag that was uh, on top, you know, okay. where so they were throwing the trash at, when I picked that up to change it, that's when I noticed that there was, uh, when I seen the baby. Okay, so you lift the liner and then saw yeah. the baby, okay. And I know this bugs, bugs you, but can you, like, describe the baby? Yeah, it, he was about like that big. He had hair, and um, he was like, Purplish, but still not like pink. You know, I don't know how to describe it. You know, he was like he wasn't bruised or nothing like that, and he was like purple, pink, pink skin type color. Okay. What, how was the bag? What? How was the bag 
placed or what? Uh, it looks like they, she wrapped it around like that and then wrapped it like under you and then snuck, put it on the bottom of it. Okay. And was the baby moving at all? No. Okay. Did you touch him at all? No. Okay. And so you said you called HT and Lori? Yes. Okay. What happened? What did you see after that? What did you do? Okay. When I, that, when all that happened, I had, I moved the trash can. I, I told him that there was a baby in the trash. I could barely talk at that moment. And so that, then they started, they took over and I, I left. I mean, I went up to the nurse's station and, and, I, and then they called the doctor and everything and all that stuff. After that, did you have any contact with the baby? No. Okay. And then what happened after that? After you went to the nurse's station? Oh, they all went over there with the baby. No, what did you do? Like, oh, I just stood there and I was freaking out and everybody was, you know, asking me what's going on and whatever. And I stood, I didn't go back over there where they were at. Okay. And then, um, was that whenever I showed up or? Yeah, that was about the time you showed up. So you were just at the nurse station until I showed up and talked to you? Yeah, well, after that, um, I went back to EVS to the department I work at. Okay. I went over there and, um, trying to get away from that for a moment. And, uh, I went there for a little while and then they, um, called me and told me that you were coming in so I, for me to go wait in the ER. Okay. And that's what I did. Okay. And after, other than this, is there anything that we, that I asked you, that I haven't asked you that you think I should know? Um, no, I think I've, I think it's all. Think that's it? Okay. Yeah, if I can remember of something, I'll write it down. That okay. way I won't forget. You know, this poor housekeeper, she goes on to explain how she had a, a boyfriend who committed the S, big S, right in front of her uh, a few years before she went to, she came to work at the hospital. Uh, so she's been through a lot of trauma and no one, no one expects to find a, find a dead baby in the trash can anywhere, let alone in a hospital, in a hospital bathroom. So, Again, there's other interviews, uh, but with all the other nurses and what have you, yeah, it, it, it breaks my heart, though. I've, I've listened to her her talk a few times here, and uh, it breaks my heart. It really does, and I hope that she's able to get uh, some, you know, counseling or anything that she needs to get through this, and as well as the nursing staff and the rest of them, because, again, this is this is not something that, they all expected to, to see on their shift at all. So what do you think of the, uh, the autopsy findings and um, all of this? Uh, again, like I said previously, I hope that she, uh, she gets jail time. And uh, her best bet truly is to hope for a, a plea with the state and uh and take it but I, I don't think that she's gonna do it I mean what do you guys think do you think if the state offers her a plea a plea deal that that she'll take it or do you think that she's too hard-headed and stubborn and hurt her mom and her attorneys who all her attorney who doesn't think she did anything wrong and all they want to do is go after this hospital and this police department uh, saying that it's all their fault yeah, I, I, I just really dislike people who can't take their own responsibility. And obviously, Alexi is definitely one, and her mom is right up there as well. I think that that's where she, she learns it from. But let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll keep you guys up to date on this one. And with that said and done, that's all I've got for this one. I hope you have a great rest of the day, and most of all... Stay safe.